Hello and welcome to Savvy Broadcasting Life Unscripted with your host, Christina Rivera. Our guest today is May McCarthy, sharing the five characteristics that every entrepreneur must have. Find out more about May at maymccarthy.com. Hi, May. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting Life Unscripted. We're so grateful to have you here today. You're going to be sharing the five characteristics every entrepreneur needs to have to be successful. And you've been super successful. Before we go on to sharing these tips, share really quickly just a little bit about your background so people can get a flavor. All right. Well, I've had the pleasure and privilege to be part of seven different startup companies. Uh, my largest was about $120 million in annual revenues uh, in the telecommunications industry. And I've been involved in lots of different industries, for everything from fashion retail, both domestic and international telecommunications, as well as software and equipment for large hospital systems to automate their drug distribution processes. Wow. So lots of different industries. But one thing I know that they all have in common is that they're all businesses. And you have to plan you have to execute on your plan. You have to make sure that you are providing a service that people need or a product that solves a problem mm -hmm. and also make sure that your customers are on board with your purpose mm -hmm. and that so are your employees and all of your stakeholders. Absolutely. And you also wrote a book, correct? I've written two books. Sure. The first is called The Path to Wealth, mm -hmm. Seven Spiritual Steps for Financial Abundance. And the second is called the gratitude formula. And I wrote that mm -hmm. primarily because people were having great success with the path to wealth mm -hmm. for the goals that they believed they could achieve. But there were some goals that they had that were much bigger that they didn't quite believe that they could achieve. And so the gratitude formula helps them to shift their beliefs to possibility so that they can achieve those giant goals as well. Wow. And it's amazing the power of gratitude. And I've seen that work in my own life that you just put aside and realize, you know, you're complaining about what you don't have. I want this. I don't have my dream here. And then if you open up to your heart and saying, here's all the blessings I do have right now, you begin to see it's everywhere. And then you open up the opportunities for more blessings to come. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And I'm a, I'm a big believer that wherever you're putting your attention, you're actually dictating to your subconscious and this wonderful intelligence that shows up through intuition and through other people, whatever you're putting your attention on, you're telling all of those powers yeah. to illuminate evidence of whatever you're putting your attention on. So if you're always putting your attention on lack, guess what? You're going to see more and more lack. If you're always putting your attention on the competition being better prepared, then guess what? They're going to be better prepared and get more sales than you. If you're always putting your attention on success and serving your customers in really valuable ways and facilitating fabulous fair exchanges of value and providing superior products and services, guess what? You're going to have innovation and creative ideas to execute in accordance with whatever you're putting your attention on. That is awesome and so true. So does this fall in line with the five characteristics every entrepreneur needs to have? Well, it's really interesting, this topic, because I go into uh, university classrooms a lot, mm -hmm. and I also mentor a lot of small businesses. I'm an angel investor, and that, what that means is that I invest in companies who, whose founders I don't know. This is usually after the friends and family and bootstrap rounds, and they're actually going out for private placement money. Hmm. So I look at about 100 different pitches. And when I look at a deal, mm -hmm. I always look at the characteristics of the founders and the executives and the team that are going to execute on the plan that they put out there. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed is that not every single person is, is really equipped. They haven't, they haven't um, uh, built up those characteristics that are necessary for really becoming a successful entrepreneur. So I have five of them for you. The first is that you've got to be a risk taker. You have to be comfortable with risk. 
I remember selling everything and mortgaging my house wow. um, to two mortgages in order to put everything into businesses mm -hmm. and just kind of taking a crapshoot. But I was a risk taker. I believed in what we were providing. Mm -hmm. So if you are risk averse, if any of your audience is risk averse, they want to really ask themselves, am I a better executive? who can, cr can create and execute on plan while somebody else takes the financial risk? Mm. Um, or do I have what it takes to risk it all on a business that I want to start? Mm. The second is vision. And what I mean by that is you need to see well beyond what life looks like today in the business environment. And for instance, in my last company, one of the things that we knew we wanted to solve were people dying in hospitals. People were dying because there was no validation that they were getting the right medications at the bedside. So mm -hmm. many medications look and sound alike. Mm -hmm. And so many medications come in different units. So you might have a 10 milligram, a 20 milligram, a 50 milligram. Mm -hmm. If you're given the wrong dose of any medication, it could kill you. And over 100,000 people were dying every year. So we wanted to put a system in mm -hmm. that helped save lives. And we knew that hospitals don't buy on patient safety. It's mm -hmm. so sad, but they don't. So we had to have this vision that we could accomplish what we wanted while giving these hospital systems what they wanted, which was to save money, mm -hmm. to improve productivity, to reduce space, Mm -hmm. and to validate patient safety at the bedside. Fortunately for us, we were so loud about this, mm -hmm. and other hospitals started to become champions and get on board that the FDA mm -hmm. actually jumped on board and mandated that this kind of barcode medication administration actually be installed in every single hospital. I so now it's... Matter of fact, but back then it wasn't. So you have to have a vision that that is beyond what the business uh, mm -hmm. landscape looks like today, and yeah. stick with it. Yeah, I love that, May. I love that. I love that because uh, I also this this makes it that much safer. And I think what you did for the hospitals is make it so they get less lawsuits. So I think once they could see the value of how this is going to really save them in money and lawsuits later on, because they're going to really be able to serve their patients a lot better. That right, but and the, unfortunately for pharmacy, pharmacy ends up being one of those departments in a hospital that can be, you know, 15% of the budget, but their stuff is not charged separately unless it's a cancer hospital. Hmm. Usually, you go in for a procedure, the drugs just come along with it. Ah. So it's a flat, it's a flat price for the procedure, and so... In the hospital world, administration looks at pharmacy as just an expense. So what we could do to help pharmacy install this sooner mm -hmm. is to help them save money. So we put in a just-in-time inventory system with giant revolving shelving units and tricked out software so that they could have a more efficient, in fact, like at MD Anderson Medical Center, mm -hmm. it was taking them eight hours to get the drugs pulled and up to the floors in their hospital system. Wow. With our system operating, mm -hmm. and we changed the way that they pulled medications off the shelves mm -hmm. and automated the whole process, they were able to complete that task in 90 minutes wow. versus eight hours. That's so we saved great. them time, we saved them space, mm -hmm. and because we put in a just-in-time inventory management system, mm -hmm. we were able to reduce their inventory on hand by 40% and mm -hmm. reduce waste because medications have an expiration date. And if you're overstocked mm -hmm. on medications, chances are that more medications are going to expire. Yeah. So by reducing the overstocking and allowing them to move medications around their whole health system because of our enterprise-wide software, mm -hmm. we could identify the medications that were just going to expire and get them to another one of their hospitals in the network so that it could be used up before it expired. They were throwing away 4% of their $352 million drug budget. Wow. And we were able to significantly reduce that as a result. And we did that for many, many, many hospitals across the nation.
That's fabulous. That is, see, that is totally how to see vision and put it forth. Now, what's number three? Number three is creativity. Hmm. You know, so many people get stuck. You know, as you know, when you're working with other businesses, especially business to business, when you're working with other businesses, they have a way that they like to do things. And everybody's risk averse, right? They just want to they just want to get as much productivity and as much as they can out of doing it this way. But you can be really creative and come up with some very slight changes mm -hmm. that make everybody's life easier. Yeah. And so when you have those creative impulses, make sure that you really vet them out. Don't just throw them away because it's not being done. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you take the time to really analyze that. Check in with your executive management team. Check in with your board members. Check in with your champion customers and really vet those creative ideas. Mm -hmm. But that creativity has to come from somewhere. And usually a true entrepreneur is always creative, is always thinking about better and better and better ways to do things, yeah. easy ways to do things, more effective ways to do things, more profitable ways to do things while benefiting the customer in a greater way. So don't get stuck yeah. and just think, okay, this is good enough. Yeah. Always be creative to improve. The fourth one is tenacity. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of people that say, oh, you just can't do that. Oh, that's not going to work. Oh, this is, I mean, imagine years and years and years ago before the internet that Jeff Bezos came to you and said, I'm going to let you buy everything that you want and have it delivered the same day. You'd be like, mm, yeah, right. That's not going to happen. <laughs> well, look what's happening today. He's tenacious, absolutely tenacious. And Bill Gates, same thing. I mean, he wanted a computer in every single home at, um, that people could access information to improve their lives. Mm -hmm. So be tenacious, even if it seems like a far out idea, like taking out shelves in hospital pharmacies and putting in automated revolving shelving units that mm -hmm. you can't see the drugs anymore except for one row that pops up in your view. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that, that just seems so far out there, but be tenacious. Even if people say no, make sure that you don't take no and you keep going. If you really believe this is the right solution or the right convenience. And then finally, mm -hmm. you got to have passion. Yeah. This isn't something that gets you so excited if you're just starting a business, if anybody is just starting a business to make a bunch of money, Mm -hmm. They're not going to have the wherewithal to stick with it when they get sued by Fortune 20 companies or, or get into some sort of a challenge with an installation or something. They're not going to have the wherewithal to stick through and work those 20 hours a day being the janitor, the marketing department, the business development department, the sales department, you know, um, the uh, designer for the software department. I mean, you're, you've got to wear so many hats as a small business person um, that you have to have passion because that's the only thing that's going to give you that extra bit of energy to, to uh, take this down the long road of success. Yeah, I, I love that you say that, May, because I think uh, sometimes entrepreneurship today, people think of the, the glories of, oh, look, I could have a business. It would be my business. But not thinking about all the little sorted things. Like at first, you're not going to be able to have a staff. You're going to have to be the entire staff. And, you know, have to do things that are very uncomfortable. It will not be nine to five, that's for sure. You will not be booking out at five o'clock. <laughs> One of my very favorite books that actually outlines that is uh, The E-Myth. Oh. And I highly recommend that your uh, listeners and, and viewers go ahead and get a copy of E-Myth because it's entrepreneurial myth. Mm -hmm. And if uh, so many people, they'll, they'll be a, a fabulous, fabulous salesperson or technician or baker or, or hairstylist or, or financial planner or what have you. And they're working for another company and, and they're responsible for bringing in most of the business mm -hmm. and the natural step that in their mind is, wow, if I just go off on my own, I'll make more. But guess what? There are lots and lots of things that your company is providing that you might not be aware of. 
They're taking care of the 401k and payroll. They're taking care of the leases for space. Mm -hmm. They're taking care of the marketing. They're taking care of the support staff that's helping you to do your job. Mm -hmm. If you go off on your own, you've got to do all of that, including business licensing, insurance, finding space, utilities, all of those things. Yeah. That, that you might take for granted that are being provided for you. So before you go off and start your own business, make sure, make sure that you read the e-myth and also put a business plan together. Make all your mistakes on paper first, mm. um, and it will save you a whole bunch of money and time. Well, this has been so fascinating. Great tips and advice. Thank you so much, May. Before we go, I want everyone to find out where they can find out more about you, get a copy of your books. How can they do that? Oh, they can go to maymccarthy.com. There's lots of free information at maymccarthy.com. Um, lots of videos, samples of my books, um, tons of other free stuff that's available, and including a list of all the events that I'll be speaking at around the country and some retreats that are coming up uh, to help people have a perfect and, and prosperous 2020. Awesome. Well, I thank you so much for coming to share your great gift today on Savvy Broadcasting, a Life Unscripted. Thank you so much, May. Thank you, Christine. If you like this episode, please share and leave your comments. To find out more about paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.